Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about embossing. Now embossing is a fun way to add something special to your cards, make your sentiments stand out, or make your images stand out, and I'm just talking about the basics today. Now what I'm showing you here are three of my basic embossing powders. Now I'm going to be showing you all embossing powders from Brutus Monroe today. That's just because those are the only embossing powders I have. I always get really good results with them. And so I'm just going to be showing you all Brutus Monroe powders today. But the technique is the same no matter what brand you have. So I'm showing you the black embossing powder, the clear embossing powder, and this is the white embossing powder. Now I, I feel like these are the three types of embossing powder that is kind of your basics. You can do a lot with these. You can use them on sentiments, on uh, images, and all kinds of things. You can do different things with them. And so if you want to get into embossing powder, I would say those are the three basic ones. Here I'm showing you some different cardstocks that I'm going to be working with today, just some white and some dark ones. And these are also watercolor cardstock from Buddhist Monroe. You can emboss on any kind of watercolor cardstock. I prefer these aqua pigment paper cardstocks because they're not as textured as some other watercolor papers, and so you get a better impression on them if you want to stamp on them. If you have some really textured watercolor cardstock, I definitely recommend using a Misty because you can stamp several times to get a better impression. But some watercolor cardstocks are kind of hard to get a good impression on. So we're going to start embossing now. And I'm showing you here, I have my cardstock and I have this embossing powder bag. It puts down a little bit of powder onto your cardstock and this helps reduce static cling so that when you go ahead and emboss, your embossing powder, it will help your embossing powder only stick to the ink that you are using. So I have two inks here to show you. I have my Brutus Monroe embossing ink and I have Versamark. These are both very good inks to use when embossing. They're clear, they're sticky, and they will hold your embossing powder right where you want them to go. There are a few differences between these embossing inks. Uh, Versamark is a, a clear sticky ink. You can use it on your stamps and your sentiments to emboss with. Um, it will dry if you leave it set for a while. So if you wanna do sort of a watermark background without embossing, you can do that, make a little pattern, just leave it to dry and you'll have sort of a watermark effect. The Brutus Monroe embossing ink will not dry. It's oil-based and so it, it won't dry if you don't heat set it. This is nice if you're doing a lot of embossing. You don't have to hurry up and get that embossing powder on there before it dries. It's just gonna stay sticky until you hit it with a heat tool. So I just stamped using my embossing inks and I sprinkled on a little bit of my embossing powder. And you can see if you get some powder sticking on where you don't want it to go, go ahead and brush it away with a dry brush. I'm just showing you here that this powder will brush away if you brush it onto your cardstock or anything. If you accidentally hit one of your images with your powder, just sprinkle a little bit back on. I like to use a coffee filter underneath my embossing just to catch that extra powder. And then you can pick up that powder and just uh, carefully pour it back into your jar. And a little bit of powder goes a long way. These jars, I've had them for a while um, and I still have quite a bit of powder. So you can get a lot of embossing with just a little jar of embossing powder. Once you have your image stamped, you have your embossing powder on it, you will need a heat tool or some way to melt that powder to make it stay and be permanent. I, I really like the Wagner heat gun. I feel this one gives me the best results. I've had a different kind of heat gun in the past. It's very simple, just has an on and off switch. When you turn it on, it'll heat up, it'll blow out some hot air, and then you hold it up to your paper and up to your embossing powder just until that powder melts. And you wanna make sure you melt all of that powder on your image, and then it will stay on your paper. It'll be there, it'll be permanent, and you can do any kind of coloring on top of your embossing powder. Now, the longer you hold your heat tool on your cardstock, the more chance of it warping. So if you wanna reduce warping on your cardstock, make sure your heat tool warms up for a good minute or so, that it's really hot, and then bring it to your paper, and only hold it on your embossing powder just until you see it melt and then move on. Don't hold it in one place too long. 
So I'm stamping out the same image again. I'm using the Brutus Monroe embossing ink. I just want to show you that you get very good results using either of these inks. The main difference is um, they're different. Their their bases are different. Um, the Versamark, like I mentioned, will dry on you um, eventually, and the Brutus Monroe ink won't dry unless you heat set it. But I I get good results with both of these inks. So these are the two inks I would recommend for heat embossing. So I'm just embossing this other flower here. I think I failed to mention before that I am using some Unity stamps. These are rubber cling stamps. If you're not using a Misty, you can get better results with rubber cling stamps, I have found, than with clear stamps. And since I wasn't using my Misty today, I wanted to grab some of those red rubber stamps. And I absolutely love these flowers. I will post a link for them down in the description if you want to grab some yourself. So I am now going to be embossing on black cardstock. I wanted to use a dark cardstock to show you the alabaster white embossing powder. Um, like I mentioned, I'm using Brutus Monroe powders. Their white is called alabaster. Um, but I just wanted to show you how you can use white on a dark cardstock and get a really great impression as well. Uh, the embossing powder I used previously was Raven. That was Brutus Monroe's black. So you can see here you get kind of a watermark stamped image on your background. Um, if you use Versamark and you want that subtle background, you could just let that dry and have um, that pattern on the background. Um, but I'm just going to emboss it today. So I've got my coffee filter. I'm switching it out here because I used black before and I didn't want to get little black specks of embossing powder into my white embossing powder. So you might want to keep that in mind when you're using different colors, maybe keep a different coffee filter for each one. In the past, I've made the mistake of accidentally mixing some red powder in with my white because I didn't change my, my paper or my coffee filter or whatever I was catching it with. And then it really bothered me every time I did a sentiment or an image and I had little specks of red in my white powder. Um, so that's just something, something to think about if that's going to bother you. So here's my white. I have that embossed. And the embossing, if you haven't done it before, once your image is embossed, it's a little bit of a raised edge. It's raised, it's shiny. So it gives a little bit more dimension and something special to your sentiments and your stamped images. Here I want to show you that you can also stamp out sentiments using these basic powders. I really love that the Brutus Monroe powder is really ultra fine. That helps it stick to these tiny sentiments and tiny detailed stamp images. And you get a really great image um, and a really great embossed sentiment using these powders. So I've gone ahead and stamped out the sentiment. I'm just cleaning up around the edges with my dry brush. I'm wiping away some of those little powders that stuck where they weren't supposed to go. And then I'm just going ahead and heating it up with my heat tool. So whether you're embossing a sentiment or an image or whatever you're doing, the basics are the same. You stamp, you sprinkle on your powder, you heat it up with your heat tool, and you have really great embossed images. So those are your basic powders. Now I wanted to show you the icicle. I, I put this one in with your basic powders as well white and black and clear because there's a lot of things you can do with clear as well and I thought if you're starting out with embossing powders you might also want to get a clear. So I'm actually stamping with a black ink now. I'm not using an embossing ink. I'm using VersaFine Black Onyx ink. This is a pigment ink. Pigment inks take a little bit longer to dry than dye inks and so you can actually emboss with them. So once you stamp it on your paper Go ahead and grab your embossing powder um, before the ink dries and you can sprinkle it on. Now I'm using clear over the black ink and so when I go ahead and melt this you're going to see the black image that I stamped but it's going to have clear embossing over the top. You can see it melting here and it's just it's always really fun I think to watch the embossing powders melt. But now you are seeing that black ink underneath the clear image. So I think most of us when we start out, we start out with black ink. And if you have this black ink or a pigment ink or an ink that you can put some clear embossing powder over, you can kind of get away with not buying a black embossing powder if you're on a tight budget 
maybe consider getting a clear and then just using it with your black ink. I want to show you now just stamping out the clear embossing powder with just the embossing ink. So before I do that, I want to make sure that my stamp is nice and clean if I want a really clear image. I don't want any of that black ink getting on my paper because that's going to show up underneath my clear. So I'm using a little bit of my squeaky clean and I'm using a microfiber cloth and I'm just cleaning this stamp off really well before I put any of my embossing ink on top. I don't want, like I said, any of that black ink showing through my clear. And so I just want to make sure it's clean. I'm going to be using my Brutus Monroe embossing ink and just embossing like you regularly would with any of your uh, embossing powders. I'm going to stamp this on another piece of white cardstock. So it's going to be hard to see kind of the lines. You might be able to see it a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and emboss with my clear. So it's not going to show up as bold as some of those other embossing powders since it's clear on white. And you might wonder what is the point of stamping and embossing an image that you can't see. But the really fun thing about embossing powders is they can act as a resist. You can put different mediums over the top of them and get some really fun looks just by clear embossing powder or any other kind of embossing powder that you want. So I wanted to show you how you can stamp an image with clear embossing powder and then use it as a resist if you wanted to do some ink blending. So here I'm giving you a look at that embossing powder. It's all melted and I'm taking some of my plum surface ink and I'm blending it on. Now you can kind of see that image now, but once you get a darker color over the top, that image really starts to stand out. The embossing powder that is melted is creating a resist um, so none of that ink is getting underneath that embossing powder. So you're seeing that white paper underneath that clear embossing powder and you're getting that resist effect. This is really fun if you want to do a stamped background or a pattern or if you want it to just kind of shine through a really bright background with inks or watercolors. I'll be showing you how to use some watercolors with these uh, embossing inks at the end of this video. Um, but I just wanted you to see the different possibilities that you have with some clear embossing powder. And you can do this with any color of embossing powder, really. So once you have ink, ink blended on, I like to take a rag or a microfiber cloth and just wipe off any of that ink that might be sitting on that embossing um, powder that's melted and then you get a really nice really nice resist kind of effect So these are my basic powders my black my white and my clear I think you can do a lot with just these three and if you only could pick one or two I would go with probably white or clear now if you wanted to add to your collection and kind of expand You can also go with metallics these are my favorite. Gilded is my absolute favorite. I use it on everything. That was the gold I just showed you. This is the sterling, the silver embossing powder. And Brutus Monroe also has a copper, which is penny. And these are all gorgeous. Like I said, the gilded is my favorite. Um, I would almost, almost put these in the basic category. I use metallics on everything. In my book, metallics are neutral. You can put them on anything. Um, so these are almost basics, I think. They're right up there next to the black and the clear and the white. Um, but if you're just starting out, you really just want to try out one or two basic embossing powders, I would go with white or clear. But if you're wanting to add to your collection, I would pick metallics next. Now this is just me. This is my opinion. You can do whatever you want. Um, but I know a lot of us are on a tight budget and I just want to show you the differences in some of these powders so that if you're interested in getting into embossing, you can make your own decision. So I'm going to be embossing some of these metallics on a dark cardstock. I feel like they really shine in that contrast of a dark cardstock and I want you to see how well they shine. I'm starting with my favorite powder, which is this gilded, this gold, and I think it's just gorgeous. Just sprinkled it on heating it up and it just shines. I love this powder. <laughs> Everyone that follows me on social media knows I have several of these jars and there's usually some kind of gilded somewhere on some of my cards. But 
you can see why. It's just beautiful. It just makes any image and any sen sentiment stand out. And I just love it. I can't say it enough. So there's the gilded on some black cardstock. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to show you the sterling now. Now this is silver and this is gorgeous as well. One thing I really love about these embossing powders, these metallics from Brutus Monroe, is again they're very super fine. So once they melt, they're going to be really shiny. They're going to um, just, any detailed stamp you have, they're just going to emboss it really well. Um, and like I said, you get a lot of shine. Sorry my camera takes a second to focus, but I hope you can see how shiny that is. Um, I know it's kind of hard to capture shine on camera. Now here is another one of my favorites. This is the copper and, well not copper, it is a copper color. It's called Penny. The name of it is Penny. I love this one actually for a lot of your fall themed cards and a lot of, um, of your fall palettes. I think it just goes really well with that color theme and it's just, it's just gorgeous. So Gilded is definitely my number one. I think Copper is a close second and then Silver is my third favorite metallic. So like I said, those are up close to your basics. Now if you really love embossing and you want to expand, there are some very fun embossing powders out there. I'm showing you here, this is Gilded Sparkle. Now this is one of my favorites as well. This is the like the gilded I just showed you, but this has glitter in it. So it just kicks that sparkle up a notch and it's gorgeous. Here is one from Brutus Monroe called Emerald City. Um, this one's unique because it's, it's a beautiful green, but it's also got some gold in it and some different flecks of other colors. This one is glow in the dark. Now I didn't emboss this one out for you today. It's kind of hard to show glow in the dark on camera. But this one was really fun to work with during Halloween. Um, you can make some glow-in-the-dark cards and do some really fun techniques with that as well. So there's a lot of different embossing powders out there that are different textures, different colors, um, really fun. Now I'm showing you here the Emerald City. Now this embossing powder, I wouldn't exactly um, classify it as one that you would want to put on a sentiment. You could, but I feel like this is more of one to create backgrounds with and color die cuts with just because it's got a little bit more texture. So it might not emboss your sentiments very crisply, but you can see all of that gold flex in there. You can see that green. It's really beautiful. I love this embossing powder. I've done die cuts with that one. I've done backgrounds with that one and it just turns out gorgeous. Now I'm going to show you the Gilded Sparkle. I love this one. This one's one of my favorite ones. I do a lot of embossing of images with this um, and die cuts and backgrounds and different things. This is the Gilded, but it has sparkle in it. It has that gold glitter. Now when that powder melts, it traps that glitter in and you just get double the sparkle. So I love this one. I use it all the time, especially on florals. I think it just looks absolutely amazing. And as pretty as it is on camera, it really just doesn't capture that shine that you see in real person. So there's those two powders swatched out. Now I'm getting kind of towards the end of my techniques that you can do with embossing powders. There are so many more that you can do, but I wanted to show you one of my very favorite things that I love to do on embossed images, and that is watercolor. So I'm taking my Unity stamp, I'm inking it up with my Brutus Monroe embossing ink, and I'm gonna stamp it onto some of that aqua pigment paper. Like I mentioned in the beginning, I like this paper because it's an, a watercolor paper, it holds watercolor really well, but it's pretty smooth, so you can stamp on it with your stamps and still get a really great embossed image without having to stamp several times. Not all watercolor paper is the same. Some of them are very textured and that's a good thing. It helps hold water, but stamping on it isn't easy. Um, it doesn't always work because your, your image kind of gets chopped up in all of that texture. So I love a smooth watercolor paper that you can really stamp and emboss on. Now watercoloring on embossed images is great because I am not an expert in watercoloring. Uh, I really just kind of, uh, you know, eyeball it and go with what I think looks good. I'm not, I, I don't know a whole lot of techniques. 
So when you emboss, your embossed lines are going to be raised a little bit. And that helps hold in that watercolor in your image. And so you get a nice watercolored image without having to do a whole lot of work. Um, it kind of keeps that watercolor from running together and um, muddying your colors. So I'm using my water brush here and I'm just dropping color into my image to watercolor this flower. I do like to add layers into my watercoloring when I can. So I like to let my um, image dry a little bit before I come in with another color and do shading. So I'm letting that flower dry. I'm putting a layer of color on the leaves here and then I'm gonna come back and add a few darker colors for a little bit of contrast and a little bit of shading. But even if you don't do a whole lot of shading and contrast, you get a really great image just by dropping in a little bit of that color into your embossed images. One thing I really love about embossing your images is if you want to do a technique here where you're adding some color around your embossed image, it makes it really easy to hold in all of that water color where it needs to go. You're not running that blue into that green and that pink. Those raised edges are keeping all of your color right where you want it to go and you're able to really watercolor a piece and it looks great and you had that help of the, the embossed image. So I hope this, this video gives you some ideas, gives you some tips on how to get started with embossing. This is really basic. Um, like I mentioned, I'd start with one or two basic colors, an embossing powder bag and a heat tool, and then you can go ahead and start embossing your images and your sentiments. Um, if you have any more questions or if I missed anything, please comment down below. Otherwise, hit the subscribe, hit the bell so you get notifications, leave a comment, hit the like button, just do all the things, and thanks for stopping by. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you again next time. Bye!